we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My name is Paul Gleiser, and I'm a middle-aged baby boomer. That means I was a kid when America began its manned space program. No one pays a lot of attention when humans are launched into space now. Spaceflight now seems routine. But in Miss Holt's second grade classroom in February 1962, it was anything but. And like nearly every place else in America, we stopped everything and brought in a small black and white television so that we could watch and listen to the mission of Friendship 7 and John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth. Like the space program itself, television coverage in those days was primitive. Mostly, you watched a static picture of mission control. There wasn't a lot to see, but you could listen to him talk that talk. MNOTM, status green, proceeding with pre-pass calibrations. I was hooked. By July 1969, I was a serious space buff, and NASA was on the cusp of fulfilling a commitment made by President John Kennedy eight years before. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Apollo was a three-man mission. Astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins had left Earth four days earlier. When it was time to land, Armstrong and Aldrin transferred to a tiny landing craft called the Lunar Module, or LEM, and they separated from the command module, leaving Collins behind, and descended for the moon. Roger, Eagle, I'm back. Today, when we talk about the lunar landing, we have the moving images. But on July 20th, 1969, all we could do was listen. Parity plus zero, 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 eight, five. But as the space program itself had gained in sophistication, so had the sound of it. Okay, all flight controllers, go, no, go for landing. Retro, go, Lido, go, guide, go, control, go, Telcom, go, GNC, go, Ecom, go, Surgeon, go, Capcom, or go for landing. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're go for landing, over. I do understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. The computer on board the LEM, less powerful than your cell phone today, became overloaded and threatened to abort the mission. 1201. 1201. Roger. 1201 alarm. 1201 alarm. Same type for go flight. Cool heads prevailed. Okay, we're go. We're go. Same type. We're go. Two 1600. Eagle looking great. Roger. 1202. We copy it. With about 30 seconds of descent fuel left in the tanks, the lunar module touched down. 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Great shadow. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, just. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. And a new phrase entered the lexicon. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. About six and a half hours after the landing, the moonwalk began. In NASA parlance, it was called extravehicular activity, or EVA. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming. Commander Neil Armstrong went down the ladder first, and when he got there, he turned on a TV camera. Now we could see what was happening. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The goals of the EVA were rather modest. Set some simple science experiments, gather some lunar samples, and come back home. And in the two hours, 37 minutes they were on the surface, that's what Armstrong and Aldrin did. After about 31 hours on the surface, they launched the LEM, rejoined Michael Collins in lunar orbit, and the three came home to what would become a hero's welcome. Kennedy's challenge had been met. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The problem for NASA quickly became that I have no idea where I was when Apollo 12 landed on the moon four months later but I will always remember where I was on July 20th, 1969. Where were you? For Trinity Mother Francis Health System and Hibbs Hallmark and Company Insurance, 
I'm Paul Gleiser.